The Messerschmitt 163 Comet was the only operational rocket-powered fighter aircraft in history, as well as the first piloted aircraft of any type to exceed 1000 km per hour in level flight. Following the initial trial missions during the winter and spring of 1944, the Luftwaffe formed its first dedicated 163 fighter wing, the Jagdgeschwader or Fighter Wing 400. Its purpose was to provide additional protection for the Loina synthetic gasoline works which were raided frequently during almost all of 1944. A further group was stationed near Stettin to protect the large synthetic fuel plant there, and further units of rocket fighters were planned for Berlin and the Ruhr. Initially, the Luftwaffe planned for the 163 to be positioned at a series of auxiliary airfields along Allied bomber routes. This would be fully equipped with spare parts, ammunition and fuel and positioned close to each other. This way, after an attack run, the 163 pilots could simply choose on which airfield to land, knowing that they could resupply without any problems. But the development of a network of supporting airfields for the 163 was never completed. In May of 1944, the size of the first and second squadron of the Fighter Wing 400 was to be increased to 14 instead of 12 operational aircraft. Finally, in July of 1944, the first squadron received permission to make combat flights. The 163 were then used in several failed attempts to intercept the Allied reconnaissance aircraft that made frequent flights over the base. The original plans to build numerous connected airfields were abandoned in favor of concentrating all available 163s in a few selected airfields. For this reason, Brandis would become the main key point for the 163 combat operations. It is from there that the 163s attempted to intercept a huge Allied air formation of some 700 bombers supported with 14 groups of fighters. The 163s did not engage the Allies, probably due to a small number of available aircraft and heavy fighter cover. By the end of July, the 1st Squadron had only four operational aircraft. In the middle of August, the 163s from this unit attacked an Allied B-17 bomber formation. While evading the fighter cover, they managed to heavily damage at least one bomber, killing two crew members. On the 16th of August, five 163s attacked a group of B-17s and even managed to shoot down two of the bombers. The Germans lost one aircraft during this engagement being hit by an Allied fighter. On the 24th of August, eight 163s managed to shoot down three more bombers while successfully evading enemy fighter cover. Given the previous success of destroying five enemy bombers with a limited number of available 163s, attempts were made to increase the number of squadrons with 20 aircraft. During these initial combat engagements with the Allied bombers, German pilots noticed that the 163's armament had a huge flow. The weapons were difficult to use with the standard attack tactics of the aircraft. 
This involved getting the 163 high above the Allied bombers and then plunging down at them. Due to its main cannon's slow velocity and in order to avoid collision with the target, the pilot had only a few seconds available to engage the enemy. This meant that only the most experienced German pilots had a chance of hitting the enemy aircraft. The 163 also had another flaw, as it could be only used when the weather was clear. At the end of September 1944, the second group of the Fighter Wing 400 was formed, but bad weather lack of fuel and the rapid Allied advance on the west and east temporarily stopped all 163 combat operations. They restarted only in March of 1945. On the 16th of March, a rocket fighter managed to damage a Mosquito on a reconnaissance mission. While the Mosquito pilot managed to fly back to France, he was forced to crash land. A quite interesting air victory was achieved on the 10th of April 1945. This aircraft was equipped with a Sondergerät or special device 500 Jägerfaust or Hunter's Fist, an experimental airborne anti-bomber recoilless rifle. The 5 cm shell was mounted in a launch tube held in place by a pair of thin pins. Four such tubes were mounted vertically to fly upward in each wing. To ensure it would be fired at the correct time, the weapon featured a simple form of automated trigger in which an optic photocell detected the dark silhouette of the Allied bomber, replacing the bright blue sky, and triggered the mechanism. Though initial results were promising, the war ended before it could see live action. The, in late April, the first group of the Jagdgeschwader 400 would be disbanded and its remaining few operational 163s were allocated to the 7th Fighter Wing. The former commander Wolfgang Späte, flying one of the remaining operational 163s, managed to destroy five additional Allied bombers by the end of the war. The remaining ground personnel from the first group of the Fighter Wing 400 were dispatched to the east to fight as regular infantry. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.